what's up YouTube fam? Brandon Weaver here once again. Today we're talking about the dreaded, the awful, the terrible student loan. All right guys, how do we get them off the reports? How do we get the late payments off the reports? How do we get rid of these student loans? I've got a question here. First off, we're gonna get to this email, all right? This one's gonna be a little bit longer, so let's strap in. Here we go, five. Say, hey, sorry to write you so late, but I brought your do-it-yourself package. I'm a low-income student. Hey, students, you know, more power to you. I'm sure you're working part-time and going to school full-time, or maybe you're doing both full-time, but until you get that degree, maybe you're not earning and burning, snapping necks and cashing checks, so it's all good that you're low-income, all right? But get your income up, all right? You're gonna be just fine, all right? Businesses are available to you. Jobs are gonna be available to you, okay? You're gonna be A-okay, don't sweat but let's get to these student loans, let's get this credit issue, credit repair. Now, got a lot going on in this email. All right, now, I wanna get my credit straight because I wanna start my own business, as we talked about, excellent, but credit stopping, right? Main problem I'm having is the student loan service Navient, okay, Navient, okay? We're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about some Navient here in a minute, all right? We're about to talk bad behind Navient's back, okay? Here we go. They marked seven of his student loan payments, okay? Student loan payments 90 days late at one time. This dropped the score 120 points. Now, I have, it says, I have a retro forbearance with backdash, backdating, okay, backdated my loans during that default period. So, technically, nothing late, okay? Technically, nothing late. This is another way to get late payments off your credit report quickly with Navient or any other server great lakes, okay? Direct loans, all your student loan needs, okay? If you can get a backdated forbearance for whatever reason, hey, a lot of people got their own story. Mine was my hips, knees, health, okay? My, my surgeries, all right? My inability to work. Maybe you've got a story as well that could get you backdated forbearance. Now, now, it goes on. None of the credit bureaus would update the 90 days late because simply it was accurate. No, it wasn't accurate because you have a document saying that it's forbearance backdated, right? Backdated forbearance is a legal binding document. Those late payments are not accurate. Your assumption is incorrect. The credit bureaus need to change it, okay? The credit bureaus need to change it. Is it possible to do this? Um, can I capitalize? Oh, and they got to capitalize interest off of this request. Of course, they want the interest payment for the forbearance. The forbearance, you usually have to pay interest on a forbearance. Unless you can't meet that, you could potentially get an income-based repayment plan or income-based uh, payment payments. And if you can't, if you meet a certain criteria, the government will actually take care of your interest or you can get zero, zero payment for a period of time. Usually the first three years on this income-based repayment program, the uh, government can take over for the interest or you'll just have a big old goose egg, zero payment. So, yes, you want to send in this proof, okay? You want to send in your 609 letters disputing the late payments. You want to send in the proof, but I'm gonna read something else to you that's gonna help you out because the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau just last year took care of Navient, this issue, okay? And I'm gonna read this to you. It's a little bit more lengthy, but it's gonna be very helpful for you and other individuals out there who are having difficulty with student loans, having difficulty with Navient in general, because Navient was doing some stuff that they weren't necessarily supposed to be doing. And the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau found out about it, took them to court, and sued them over this situation, okay? CFPB sues nation's largest student loan company, Navient, for failing, for failing borrowers at every stage of repayment, okay? So it's not just you. Navient is formerly part of Sally Mae. During this whole issue debacle, 2008 markets falling apart, Sally Mae, for any all this problem, Navient is now this weird offshoot outside that has its own issue about processing loans that they don't even own. It's weird, but whatever. So Navient, formerly part of Sally Mae, illegally cheated borrowers out of repayment rights through shortcuts and deception. Illegally, this is, this, is not, this is not something that is being fabricated. This is on a government website about a federally backed Navient student loan processor, holder, 
supposed holder of promissory notes, saying that they illegally cheated borrowers out of repayment rights through shortcut, the CFPB sues nation's largest student loan provider. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, I'm gonna paraphrase some of this for us so we can get through it relatively quickly. But what it says here is they illegally were doing stuff like, let me get into it, let me let, me let you know. All right, so, let me scroll down here. Fail to comply to, uh, failure to apply or allocate borrow payment to their accounts, okay? So what's happening to this individual now who has this backdated forbearance, good on you, glad you got it, this, the Navient may not be reporting it for you to the bureaus like they're supposed to. If they made an error and they want to correct it, they need to correct it all the way through. So now you've got to dispute it. Now you've got to send in your letters of exercise, of equity, okay? To exercise equity to see if they have the promissory note. Because if they don't, they don't, they can't hold your feet to the fire, right? The instrument of indebtedness. So you can file your complaint directly with the CFPB and show them that you have the forbearance. It doesn't matter if it was backdated, that is a legal document, it doesn't matter. That is what it was. For whatever reason, the forbearance was granted back in that time. It doesn't matter that it came now, okay? They have to update it. So you can upload your documents to the CFPB and under this stuff where they have this, look, this, this is what's crazy about it. The CFPB also sued them for steering struggling borrowers toward paying more than they had to on their loans, obscuring information consumers needed to maintain their lower interest payments and their lower payments, okay? Borrowers who successfully enrolled in an income-driven repayment plan or an IBR, like many of us know, the income-based repayment plan, they were, um, if they hit the certain cap for income and family size, they didn't have to pay anything, right? But Navient's emails and annual renewal notices sent to borrowers fail to adequately inform them of critical deadlines or consequences if they failed to act, okay? This is the stuff that they did. Deceived private student loan borrowers about requirements to release their co-signer from the loan. Remember we had a whole discussion, I think maybe last week, where I was like, don't co-sign, don't co-sign, so I don't co-sign. Navient told borrowers that they could apply for co-sign or release if they made a certain number of payments, on-time payments, consecutive on-time payments. Even though it permits borrowers to repay monthly installments in advance and tells customers who do prepay that they can skip upcoming payments when borrowers did so, Navient reset the counter. So they say, look, you pay us seven times in a row, you're cool, we'll release co-signer. Great. You pay all up front, all seven, you should be able to release the co-signer. Oh no, we reset the clock on you. I mean, deceptive practices, illegal practices. So, go right to the CFPB. Say Navient is not updating with the credit bureaus. Send them your supporting documentation. Send that stuff into the bureaus. Dispute at 609creditrepair.com where we got your letters to dispute this stuff off your credit reports immediately. Immediately, okay? 609creditrepair.com. We can do the work for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. It sickens me. It goes on to say they harmed credit scores of disabled borrowers and injured veterans, okay? Student loan payments are reported to credit reporting agencies, right? Companies. Severely and permanently disabled borrowers with federal student loans, including veterans who are disabled, connecting with their military, connected with their military service, okay? have the right to seek loan forgiveness. Loan forgiveness. Navient misreported to the credit reporting companies that borrowers who had their loans discharged under this program had defaulted on their loans. Had defaulted on their loans. This is wild, wild nonsense. So, you're not alone. You are not alone. And you have help. This, was ha this happened last year. The CFPB took them to court. They fight, they're getting stuff squared away for you guys. I'm glad things are good and we can help you out. We can get you through that process. So dispute, you're gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm really, really excited for you because you're making the right steps, okay? If this video is helping you out, give a thumbs up. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys. So, I've gotten other questions, other things, all right? I don't wanna, I don't wanna be, I don't belabor it. I don't want to belabor the student loans. You can take care of those. You absolutely can. Uh, late payments, obviously, we've got late payment dispute letters. If it's only a couple, I've actually used Goodwill letters before. My partner, Cronita, has used Goodwill letters before. You can get those late 
payments updated. If there's just a couple late payments, look to get um, back on track if you need to get that backdated forbearance, okay? So don't belabor it. I've gotten other questions as well about other topics. Um, some light stuff, people asking about their partial account numbers a lot still. Guys, partial account numbers are A-OK. -okay. I appreciate you wanting to go above and beyond and go for that gold and get every single number on that account, but it's OK. Partial account numbers are fine. Your student loans, you have partial account numbers on there you want to dispute, use the partial account numbers. Usually it's the last four that are blocked out. So if you're looking at your credit check totals, your my FICOs, or whatever it is that you have, the privacy guards, the identity IQs, and you're looking at your student loan, you want to dispute it, and you only have the partial account number, it's all good. Usually you can log into your account if you have a current student loan or something like that, and you can see the full account number. Also, sometimes if you have the old credit card and you have the account number there, you can usually usually utilize that. However, double check in your reports. Sometimes the internal account number could be a little bit different than the account number on your credit card. I've actually seen that happen. Very challenging. And if it's the wrong account number, see this is what we talk about, this inaccuracy. These unverified accounts where the account number might be incorrect, that is another tick to dispute under. Unverified account, unverified, wrong account, not my account. All these things where you put that are not mine have to be verified, have to 100% be verified per the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And if that account number is wrong on there, that may not be your account. You wanna be cautious. So if you wanna double check your account numbers, take a look at your old credit cards, take a look at your old um, statements, and some of these things may not be yours at all. They might have nothing to do with you. I have, I've actually seen this, okay? We see all sorts of nonsense, things getting crisscrossed. Make sure, check it out, 609creditpair.com, or we can do it for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. Make sure to hit that little subscribe button, smash it, smash it, and hit that even smaller bell for notifications. Hit that bell, hit that subscribe for notifications so you get all this good information when it comes direct to you. And hey guys, until I see you in person, I'll see you on the other side. Take care.